British retail sales rebounded surprisingly in January on falling fuel costs and discounting by online and physical stores, according to official data showing, uh, released on Friday. Retail sales by volume grew 0.5% last month after a 1.2% drop in December, the Office for National Statistics said in a statement. Analysts had forecast a slight drop in January sales. For more on these headlines, we cross over to London, where we're joined by Rise Business Analyst, Bode Oshosumi. Good afternoon, Bode. Thanks so much for joining us. So DoorDash looks like another story of a post-lockdown bounce. Is this sustainable? Well, apparently not, uh, given how the markets are, uh, are reacting. Although today, shares that are accelerating inflation uh, in the face of a resurgent, uh, of a resilient economy, could prompt the Fed to err on the side of caution by keeping monetary policy restrictive uh, through the year. So the, if you look at markets, um, they are pretty much on the bearish side. All the major indices are in negative territory. And I'm looking at DoorDash, the strength that we saw after hours yesterday, even in pre-markets, I noticed it was up uh, over 3%. Now DoorDash is, is down 2.17%. Uh, but 40% um, increase year on year on, on, on Q4 revenue is, is no mean feat. So they, they have done well, beating earnings uh, per share and, and revenues, uh, beating what uh, Wall Street uh, had forecasted on both earnings per share and revenues. And um, the, the other issue, of course, with, with DoorDash we have to accept is with all the regulatory headwinds uh, attacking this uh, sector, gig workers and their compensation would drive costs higher and um, that will eat into margins. And without much barrier to entry, retail Giants such as Amazon will eventually use their logistical prowess to uh, push uh, DoorDash out. But um, DoorDash has done quite well, especially in the suburban um, areas. They're pretty strong. Their lead in market share over Uber is more than 30% in US suburban areas. And their loyalty membership perks seem to be very, very, very uh, popular. They, we understand they have 15 million total loyalty members as at the end of last year, which is 3 million more members than Uber uh, has. They've invested heavily in infrastructure. And uh, that, again, is paying back. They invested over $8 billion to buy delivery uh, platform Walt in, in Europe. Uh, we've already seen Walt's gross order value rising 50% year on year to in, in Q4 to roughly 1 billion euros. So you, the payback on, on that uh, investment is, is there. But um, just like I said, the advantages they have are not very strong. Amazon, with its huge uh, cash chest, can invest very, very heavily uh, into a market like this if they, they want to push uh, DoorDash out. The advantage that DoorDash may have with lower costs compared to Uber will easily be um, uh, eroded if having to deal with uh, an Amazon moving heavily into this uh, space. But uh, I think they, they, they are doing pretty well as a low-cost uh, leader, which seems to be their, their strategy. And I think the winners in this space will leverage scale, investment, and operational efficiency uh, to using technology to bring down costs. And if you have low cost leadership, uh, you're sure to expand your, your, your market. People are very, very price sensitive. Uber is struggling in the lower tier because it's perceived as expensive. It's doing well in the mid upper tier uh, part of the market because those who don't want to go to a restaurant either for affordability reasons or just want to pay at home uh, would, would of course go to uh, Uber. But the McDonald crowd uh, will certainly uh, be preferring a door dash. But um, they are changing uh, the, the leadership at the top. I understand CFO Prabir Adaka is now going to be president and chief uh, operating officer Christopher Payne will be leaving the company March 1 and the CFO role will now go to Ravi uh, Inukanda. But um, uh, like I said, markets are pretty hard to please these days. Uh, DoorDash is, is down 3.21% uh, as we speak. And also, uh, getting uh, our, we just got some data from uh, Europe uh, in the morning. UK retail sales, P, uh, produ uh, PPI from uh, Germany, producer price index. Uh, what are we learning from those numbers? Well, the, we are getting macroeconomic surprises. Thankfully, they are good ones. UK retail sales, we had thought uh, that it would go down. Almost all forecasts saw it going down uh, to minus 0.3%. Instead, we, we saw a plus 0.5% over uh, the previous month. In December, it went down 
uh, percent. That that is a surprise. And um, retail sales is a very strong measure of consumer appetite and is a major leading indicator for economic growth. So maybe we wouldn't see a recession in, in Q1 after all, but um, it's still too early. My understanding, according to the uh, statistics office, is that automotive fuel sales volume rose uh, by 1.7 percent in January. That was uh, because of the Fuel prices fell. Uh, they rose 0.3 percent in in December. Automotive fuel sales, and um, of course, we know fuel prices are on, on going down. Food store sales volumes fell by 0.5 percent, um, and of course, we know why that is happening: increased cost of living and uh, pressures and and high, higher prices. Also, non-store retailing. That's the online retailer sales volumes rose uh, to 2%. The, the, the view is that the general trend still remains one of decline for retail sales in the UK, uh, which is still 1.4% below their pre-coronavirus February 2020 um, levels. And with depressed household incomes, uh, we are going to see obviously a shift in how much uh, customers spend, what they buy and where uh, they, they buy from. In Germany, again, good news, Producer inflation dropped to 17.8% in January from 21.6, compared with market forecast of 16.4. So it's still above market forecast, but um, it's still on the downside. Month and month, uh, I think, was slightly higher than expected. But uh, the bottom line is energy prices are, are coming down. But European uh, Central Bank governor, uh, governing council member Isabel Schnabel, she said in an interview today that another 50 basis points rate hike in March will be needed under virtually all scenarios, adding that there's a risk that markets will underestimate uh, inflation. But more good news came in that the price of European natural gas has fallen below 50 euro per mega megawatt hour for the first time in, in almost 18 months. And we know that is a major driver of, of inflation. So my, my sense, it looks like things are going in the right direction, but um, uh, as far as uh, the, the continuing, continuing this trend is concerned, it's a bit too early to say. And uh, what do you make of the uh, Bitcoin rally that we've been seeing despite all the headwinds? Well, regulators have really been battering um, this, this space, issuing directives, enforcement actions, measures reading what they see as um, uh, a very adventurous uh, sector. And banks have been given warnings, fines over aggressive practices and tougher conditions for companies to legally take custody of crypto. And it, and it goes on. After FTX saga, several frauds and increased bankruptcies, you can't blame uh, the, the regulators for being uh, alert, especially with some of these uh, securities offering over 21% yields, for example. I mean, that is, is a red flag for, for um, regulators. But only yesterday, um, like you, you reported, Sec Chair Gary Gensler alleged Terraform Labs and its founder, uh, Doquan, that's the CEO, he failed to provide the full public with full fair, truthful disclosure, in, in essentially defrauding in investors. But Bitcoin is, is managing to do better than the others. And I think there are several reasons. First, it might be that the, the ecosystem for, for crypto is telling SEC, yes, we want more regulation. It helps to legitimize our trade and of course makes people more, more comfortable. We remember this time last year, we were talking about bans, government bans and so on. Now we're talking about stricter regulation. So the, the acceptability of um, cryptos is certainly something that is going to result in, uh, I, I think, an upside as far as the sentiment is concerned. The other thing is that Bitcoin is now perceived uh, as a better option. According to the SEC chairman, Gary Gensler, Bitcoin is the only cryptocurrency he's prepared to publicly label a commodity, a commodity like oil and gas, for example, while others uh, are still considered to be securities. So the, the regulation over commodities based on the Commodity Futures Trading Commission's oversight is far less troublesome than what uh, the SEC would have been doing. But um, it's still early days and um, of course, as you know, there's a, the environment is more risk on now. We're no more talking of recession. And I think many are, are looking for higher returns. And um, why, why not Bitcoin? But don't forget, this is a very volatile asset, very susceptible to huge, huge swings in any direction. So 50% can easily be wiped out in, in two weeks. Indeed, indeed. Arise Business Analyst, Bore Oshoshimi. Bore, thanks for taking us through the headlines. Appreciate your insights as always.